In today's episode of Thermal Mermaid, we are talking lip glosses. Now, I've spent this week documenting a handful of lip gloss recipes that are now available over in the recipe collection for mermaid and siren level members. And one thing that I have discovered is that soap makers are very careful about their lip gloss ingredients, and also that there are a wide variety of preferences on how these recipes are assembled. Now, when you're making these yourself, turns out you have a lot of choices and combinations. So we have those people who are purists about what they put into their products. And then we have some vegans. And then we have people who care about sustainability. And then we have people who really want to replicate commercial products with the ingredients that they have at their fingertips. So there's really a wide range of combinations that people want when they're crafting their products. So in this video, I'm going to cover two topics today. First, I'm going to explain to you what I call cream recipes versus gel recipes in my lip gloss formulas. And then I'm going to show you how to put together the most common request when it comes to lip gloss. And that is that how do I make a perfectly clear gel base without using VersaGel? Then in part two, I'm going to show you some simple techniques to make transferring your DIY lip gloss into its packaging more easily. Now, just remember, there's no high chemistry going on here. You don't need a degree in anything to make these products, but we are making commercial quality items that you can sell in your shops and in your small businesses. So you do need to source your cosmetic supplies from cosmetic supply stores with ingredients that are meant to be used for these kind of purposes. So let's talk about cream versus gel lip gloss. Now this is just how I organize my formulas so that I know which ones that I'm preparing to make. Cream lip glosses are going to have a base with waxes and hard butters to contribute to the thickness of the product. These are more likely to be more if not all natural. They create a beautiful base but no matter how you make them, they will never be clear so you need to add a colorant to make them pretty. Gel lip glosses are made with lip safe synthetic cosmetic ingredients. These are mostly not natural, although there are some ingredients in there that you can use that are purely natural, but mostly we're talking about synthetic products. They are perfectly safe to use on your face according to the authorities who test these things. Now typically, if you're familiar with making clear gel lip gloss, you might know that most people buy a gel base and add a flavor and then add some decoration. But here, we're gonna break it down so that you have more control over what goes into your product. Our base for this gloss is going to be polybutene. This is an incredibly clear, completely transparent gel that you do have to get at a cosmetic supply store. The texture is exceptionally thick and you have to mix it with another ingredient that will thin this out. Now, you're often gonna find polybutene is advertised as a gluten and vegan free product, and that is true. It's also an organic product. And technically some people I've seen call it natural, but let me explain. This is derived from petroleum and it's classified in a family of thermoplastics. Now this product is ubiquitous through all sorts of skincare products made in the commercial world and it's safe for skin, hair, lips. You'll see it in lip glosses, you'll see it in mascaras, there is no toxicity, and this is a perfectly fine product to use in your DIY product. So if you were gonna compare this product to something more recognizable, it would be something along the lines of Vaseline or a thick version of a mineral oil as far as skin safety. Although this product is much stickier and gel-like, and certainly it is not something that you're going to use as a one ingredient formula. This has to be cut with something in order to get a texture that's more pleasing. Now to get that texture, I have three suggestions for you. The first suggestion is another chemical called hydrogenated polyisobutene. This is the kid's sister to the polybutene and it has a different texture and feel completely. This is a much thinner uh, product. It has a texture kind of like olive oil and this is also crystal clear, just like you were holding a bag of water. The hydrogenated polyisobutene is a synthetic liquid it's used to replace mineral oil and sometimes silicone oils in lots of commercial formulations. This product, it acts as a waterproofing agent. It's also an emollient. And, and it, what an emollient does is it helps to maintain the natural skin barrier. 
It prevents moisture loss and it improves the texture of the skincare product in general. This is the ingredient that makes your lip gloss feel like the product stays on your skin longer. It has that slick, dewy texture to it. And again, you're gonna find this very common in lip, lip gloss and it has a very, very high safety rating, low toxicity. This is ubiquitous in almost all of your very generic skincare products. It's kid safe too. A second option would be the use of mineral oil. Now, this is also a petroleum-based product. You're probably more familiar with it as it's packaged under baby oil. And this is a perfectly fine option that's crystal clear. And sometimes you can get a version that's a little bit cloudy, but if you shop around, you can even find this on your Walmart store shelves. And this will also very effectively cut down the polybutene to give you a texture that you like for your lip gloss. Now, the third suggestion is the use of squalene oil. Now this has been around for a while, it's not new. Squalene oil usually comes from the fat of a sperm whale, but it can also be derived from other sources from the sea. And it's basically a, an oil that comes from fish. When you're buying this from your soap supply crafters or your soap supply resources, it's often cut with olive oil because the fatty acid profile of squalene and olive oil is very similar. It's got an oleic fatty acid. Now, you might know that this is often marketed as this lush moisturizing oil. In fact, oleic acid has some drying qualities to it. So it's really not the best if you're trying to get a full moisture conditioning feel. This is also a perfectly natural option. It's not vegan, however. So if you're looking for vegan, you wanna go with the first two suggestions, but you can use this to thin out the polybutene and in Instead of that wet, slick feel, if you're really going for that lip gloss that has that slick, really outstanding shine, you wanna go for the previous suggestions. But with the squalene oil, this one feels more like it helps that gloss stay in place. It kind of like holds it together. It doesn't move around as much on your skin and it just stays where you put it. All three of these are perfectly crystal clear. You can cut the polybutene down with any of these products and you can get what looks like exactly the same product, but they slightly feel different and they have a different sort of viscosity and, and wear on your skin. So you might wanna experiment with these to see what it is that you like and how they feel to you. So out of these three possible choices, I'm gonna show you here in this demonstration what this gel looks like when we make a fun kids banana flavored clear lip gloss. Now I'm gonna combine one part of the polybutene and one part of the hydrogenated polyisobutene. And I'm gonna mix these together until they're completely incorporated. Now, this is just gonna give us a thinner version of the base product and what we started with. And at this point, what you can do is just add in your own flavor oil and add some highlight glitter and then blend this down and then package your lip gloss and it's just that easy. And then you know exactly what went into your product. Now, there's not a set rule that says you need to blend this at a one-to-one -one part, but I'm just gonna show you a little trick. One common problem in lip gloss recipes is that when you blend your colorant, it looks nice at first, and then when you give it a few minutes or maybe even a few hours to settle, the formula ends up being too thin and then the color or the additives, they just settle to the bottom and they separate on you. And you don't want that if you're working with a clear gel or a clear lip gloss. When you're working with the cream bases, it's less likely to happen. But when you have the clear one, you definitely don't want any color separation. And that's where the polybutene is the go-to base because this is thick enough to keep your colorant and your or your glitter highlight suspended in the gel without settling. And this is why I recommend the one to one part combination because that's where you get that most success at preventing that color from settling. It becomes thin enough to evenly use as a lip gel, but then at the same time, it's thick enough to hold everything else, the other additives suspended inside the formula. And you might be thinking, okay, I've seen plenty of lip glosses that don't use petroleum based ingredients and they hold their color just fine. Yes, you certainly can make all sorts of cream-based lip glosses because the heavier the waxes and the butters, that stuff makes up a small percent of the recipe, but it helps to suspend that colorant. So also, we're not using these in any of our gel formulas. We don't have any waxes or butters. If we did, we really wouldn't need this polybutene because we could kind of create that viscosity all on our own and use completely 100% natural products to formulate. And the benefit of the polybutene is we get to have that clear transparent gel and we're not looking at a cloudy lip gloss that looks like it has just random oils floating in it. Now you know a little bit 
more about some alternative products to craft your lip glosses. If you want to know more about these specific products, or you want to find out where you can get access to these, you can find out more in the information at the link below where I create reviews specifically of each product, which goes into more detail. So you can have some more confidence when you're crafting your formulas using these particular ingredients. Let's move on to our second part of our lip gloss video. That is troubleshooting issues with packaging your product into your tubes. Now, you might only need to fiddle with your packaging techniques once or twice to get your system down, but I'm just gonna show you a few features that will save you a mess the first time that you try this. When you are shopping for your cosmetic supplies, you're gonna come across a variety of tools that will help you hold, pour, package, everything that you're working on in your project. So let's assume that you are not a big corporation and you are not making 50,000 tubes of lip gloss and you don't need a giant injector conveyor belt filler machine. Let's pretend that you're making 50 tubes for your shop. You'll see suggestions that offer you products to fill your tubes using these 30 milliliter or 60 milliliter syringes. And these can be really helpful tools or they can be a disaster. Now these syringes will draw up your lip gloss very easily and it's helpful to keep in mind that the 30 milliliter syringe fits in one hand much easier. So if you're filling a 15 milliliter tube, the one that you see in my hand here, this works very nicely. Just pull the tip all the way to the bottom of the tube and fill it from the bottom going up. And this keeps everything nice and clean. Now, if you're using any of the hard tubes that have a doe's foot applicator, the mouth of the tube is just about the same size as the tip of the syringe. And the tip of the syringe for the 30 and the 60 milliliter, they're the same size. So this goes for either one of those. You can't fit the syringe into the tubes and when you try to plunge the product into the tube, it ends up creating an airtight pressure seal, and then you're just setting yourself up for a splatter disaster. Now, if you aren't expecting this, then you could end up emptying the entire tube all over your work surface. And when you try it again, it really doesn't get any easier. So you'll adjust a little bit and you'll try to drizzle the product in. And again, you end up losing a lot of it in the process. So there's no need to lose all of your lip gloss experimenting with your syringes. What you need to know is that if you're trying to fill these types of tubes, just transfer your lip gloss into a normal size condiment bottle and then tape a straw to the nose and slip the straw to the bottom of the tube and fill the tube from the bottom up. Now you have a mess free system to get all of your product cleanly into your packaging. If you're ready to start making your lip gloss to add to your cosmetic line, don't forget that all the recipes discussed here and some of the more advanced ones are located in the Thermal Mermaid recipe directory and they're all filed under Lip Cosmetics. You're welcome to come on over and explore the community and interact with other soap and cosmetic crafters. Membership into the community is free, but if you do want access to all the recipes that I publish in the directory, then you must sign up as a mermaid or a siren level member. See you guys next time.